Hello. From uh, Diary 4.0 and this special initiative called um, Diary of Hackers. I hope you will benefit from this insightful and educative uh, webinar of DOH. I'm also looking forward to you tapping from the well of wisdom and knowledge of our facilitator. I want to sincerely appreciate our cybersecurity expert of the week in person of uh, Obiora Awogu for honoring our invitation. Thank you very much, sir. We are sincerely grateful. So, um, what's Diary of Hackers? Um, many of us are just um, hearing this for the very first time. So, a Diary of Hackers is uh, an initiative or a platform to learn from um, industry leading experts from all the source field of um, cybersecurity. We also have the following is a, a, a platform that consists of, uh, I think, 80% uh, of students that study cybersecurity in Nigeria and also um, enthusiasts from the, uh, across the country. So we help our students to develop their um, knowledge, skills, and ability. Also, is a platform that they use to uh, interact with cybersecurity industry experts. The platform where they network, socialize, and have fun with peers and mentors. So uh, we are welcome once again. So I humbly employ us to make use of this uh, platform for networking, learning, and the likes. So um, before we jump in the diary, let's quickly have this short video. We love watching um, this short video before we start. So These guys are good. Let's get to work. A hot little startup with a great idea. Their target, a propass. Offices in 12 countries, 5,000 staff. You'd think they'd be secure, wouldn't you? Make some noise. A smokescreen, a decoy breach to hide what they're really after. A secret hidden in the depths of the system. Come on. Still here? Ah, uh, the computer's crashed. Join the club. See you Monday. Uh, so go for some. Right now, the chances are someone, somewhere, is attacking you. And you don't even know it. Okay, chaps. We're in. I bet you're wondering how they got this far. Give us a smile. Lovely. She's in. sensitive encryption codes from a keystroke reader hidden under a desk for six months. You got it? Easy. These guys, they know it all. Except, a few weeks earlier, a probass were hit by a smaller breach. It made them stop and think how vulnerable they were. So they brought in the experts. They carried out security awareness training and brought in their own ethical hackers to tear up the systems and predict a worst case scenario. Proactive threat intelligence. They reviewed the whole business and devised a game plan for any breach. 
Make some noise. Usk. We're in. It's a denial of service attack. We're just monitoring the situation. Very clever. Someone else bangs on the winters while you hide in the cellar. They're on to us. I'll try blocking them. Is it working? I don't know. Well, I need to know, Gil. Is it working? Lena, launch a worm. These guys are good. They're really good. They're blocking us. Try again. They're blocking us! Let's try again! Come on. Straight to me. Gotcha. Good, but not good enough. You're OK. Traffic's blocked. You can win, but there's always a next time. Who's next? Kobashi Tech. Criminals just get smarter. Who have we got for the smoke screen? Take your pick. And they're everywhere. A breach will happen. And when it does, will you be ready? Okay, you welcome back. Uh from the short break so um while we await our guest speaker for today we have we have um this is the fourth diary the first diary we have was centered on uh the opportunities that we have as cyber security students and enthusiasts to explore and meet the COVID-19. The second diary we have was uh, where a female hacker shared an experience of how she got into cybersecurity. And the third hacker that we have on the platform was uh, a founder and CEO of Cybersecurity Challenge Nigeria, where he gave us an insight on how to start a career in cyber security. So this evening we are privileged to have uh, Mr. Obiora Awugu. Uh, Mr. Obiora Awugu is a lead cyber security analyst with our first bank, Nigeria. He has over eight years of experience demonstrated experience in information security control, audit and risk management, computer forensics, incident response and vulnerability management. She also has um, cognate experience in endpoint security mm -hmm. systems and SOC operations with detailed, with detailed knowledge of various security controls various security controls he currently works in the information security operation division of first bank nigeria as a lead cyber security analyst where he is in charge with the um, investigation of information security incidents vulnerability assessment cyber threat intelligence and incident management. His team is primarily responsible for ensuring the bank is a threat driven organization for prioritization, patching against vulnerabilities, creating threat detection capabilities and con continuous uh, assessments of its security controls. Thank you very much sir, for um, this wonderful, uh, for gracing this uh, invitation. We hope to learn a lot from you, sir. Yes, sir. You can kindly unmute your mic, sir. You're welcome, sir. Hello. 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 H
Oh, okay. It's okay. 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 Is my video on, right? Um, not yet, sir. Just your slide. Oh, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. well, we can see you, sir. You're welcome, sir. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Uh, uh, it's, not, uh, it's, a, it's a privilege for me to be here today. Uh, though I, I was having some issues like uh, 10 minutes ago, <laughs> I had to restart my system and uh, my personal system I plan to use for this uh, presentation. And I couldn't, uh, it could, I couldn't uh, get it up again. <laughs> so uh, thankfully I had this uh, slide on uh, one of my drives. I had to uh, use uh, another system for this. So uh, basically, um, from the brief I was given, uh, uh, a lot of the audience are uh, students and uh, uh, those who are serving, currently serving, and uh, recent graduates. So uh, our talk today will be basically on uh, building a career as a blue, blue teamer. So um, I don't know if uh, my slide is showing. Uh, the moderator. Yes, can yes, sir. We can see your slides, sir. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we'll be looking at we'll be looking at a couple of things uh, uh, from this outline. Who is a blue teamer? Uh, what's a red team? Who are who are those who who are those we call red teamers, blue teamers, and uh, purple teamers? the role of a blue teamer in cyber defense, the key skills and certification required, key resources and personal lab setup, uh, key takeaways. I hope they are still on this slide. <laughs> okay, I have this slide and uh, the updated slide is on my system. I, I, I don't think I, I still have this on this slide, but I can say that uh, off, off my head. So we're looking at, uh, let me put it in slide mode. Okay, so who am I? Uh, um, I'll, I'll use this opportunity to tell my story, how I started, uh, how I became an information security professional. Uh, basically, uh, working as a blue teamer. Uh, some, I started my career in the bank uh, as a teller, and that's about. I spent about two or three years. I'm telling this story so that uh, because most of you, uh, while you are in school, you already have hope and aspiration where you want to work, and sometimes uh, it doesn't come the way you plan it. You might start. Uh, your career somewhere that is not related to what you do. But the main focus is for you to always uh, uh, have your eye on the goal. That particular uh, goal you want to achieve for yourself, put your eyes on the ball. So I started my career as a, as a teller, as an entry level in the bank. I was hoping that after uh, the uh, training school, I'll be posted to do something related to what I did in school. I studied computer science, uh, mathematics in school. Uh, so I got, uh, I got uh, after the training school, I was posted to the branch. Uh, I started my career as a branch operation staff. I did this for about two, two years. Uh, uh, two, two and a half years. And I was like, I can't continue like this. I, this is not what I planned for myself. And before then, I already have friends uh, that I keep in touch with, we network and we share ideas together. So I have, some of them we are in consulting, consulting firms. Some of them we are in uh, IT firms, IT security firms. So we always talk and I, when they write any certification exam, they tell me I'm like God. When, how will I get? How will I break out of where I am? So, um, so about uh, 
after spending like two, three years on that road, uh, basically around the branch operations, uh, tailoring, customer service, uh, fund transfer, I knew that to leave here, I have to do something. I have to prepare myself for an opportunity. Uh, that's when I, uh, I got in touch with uh, a friend of mine. Uh, he told me he was writing a CISA. I didn't even really know what CISA was then. So that was the first time I was hearing it. Uh, then uh, one day while in my cubicle, paying money as usual, uh, someone just uh, came in uh, to collect money. Then he was resigning from the bank. So one of his team member came to meet him uh, and told him, uh, sir, please, uh, I would like to uh, build my career, blah, blah, blah. How do, what do you advise, blah, blah, blah. So that he now repeated that uh, CISA again. Told him to start writing exams. Now while writing exams, he gained, he, he gained some knowledge and he, it will uh, boost his uh, career, blah, blah, blah. blah. While I was in my cubicle, I just wrote it down. Sister, ah, this is there must be something in it. Uh, to cut the long story short, I got I I started preparing for it. I got some materials. I started preparing for it, and uh, uh, lucky luckily I wrote the exam as a teller, and I and I passed the exam the first time. Two months after my exam, uh, an opportunity came in the same bank uh, in the uh, information system control. Uh, I applied for that role. I don't know if I, I wanted to be sure my video is showing. I applied for that role. And uh, to call the long story short, I was given, I was given an opportunity to uh, switch to information security. And that's how my career started. Remember, I was doing something I didn't like, I didn't enjoy. But what did I do? I prepared myself, waiting for that opportunity to come. And when the opportunity came, I was already prepared. And that was how I delved into IT, security control, and what have you. So over the past eight years, I've been uh, I've gone out the experience across several information security domains, system control, uh, IT audit, uh, risk management, incident response, and threat intelligence. And um, I've been able to get a couple of security certifications. And uh, uh, I think uh, these are the relevant ones I listed here. I, I, I actually have a lot more than this. So uh, today, my main, my main brief is to prepare you guys uh, in building a, uh, a career in, uh, in blue team operations. In cybersecurity, we have several, uh, several domains where you can build your career. And most times when talking to young people, I tell them you, start, you can start learning, uh, you can start with the security plus exam by the time you prepare for that exam uh and pass that exam you already know where your where your passion sh should go to should it be should you should you go towards the red team should you go towards the uh, uh, blue team operation or do you want to just do you want to uh, be uh, a purple teamer someone will use the skill you will use the skill of uh a red teamer and a, a blue teamer to carry out to, uh, to secure his organization. So we'll be, be looking at uh, opportunities around the blue team operations and how you can build relevant skills uh, along this line. We'll also be looking at um, several uh, resources that you can use to build skills along this line. And we'll also look at how you can set up uh, your personal lab. I hope I can do that on this machine. Okay, let's keep going. Um, first, let's leave the star traits. Uh, in the last about uh, 20, 22 years, we can see how 
uh, cyber threats has evolved from a malicious code, Trojans. Uh, today, we now see uh, cyber warfare between nations, fireless attack. Uh, you know, then uh, we uh, security companies make antivirus engines to detect all these uh, malware, Trojans, worms, but but these days, threat actors, they write their malware and it, it's uh, it's fireless. You, it's comes on your system, uh, initiates a PowerShell, runs uh, runs uh, its code, and you can't get any file. No file is installed on your system. So most of uh, the attack over the years, they've evolved. And uh, now that people are going moving their uh, infrastructure and workload to the cloud, it's it's, it's still going to explode. The, the threat and attack surface has widened a lot. So uh, from here, you can see that threat actors, they are very busy. And organizations need a blue team operation, uh, blue teamers to, uh, protect, to protect their uh, enterprise. And that's where we come in. Um, from the next slide, you can see that uh, from uh, cybersecurity ventures, uh, they predicted that there will be 3.5 million cybersecurity jobs by 2021. These are opportunities there for every, for all of you right now, you have the opportunity before you enter the labor market to build skills that uh, are relevant for this uh, industry. And uh, we are going to see, we are going to see what uh, those resources and those uh, skills that you should get by, as of now, that you should start doing now so that by the time you get to this level, uh, you, you won't, uh, you just, you just uh, blend in uh, very seamlessly. Uh, next slide, we can see there's a very serious case of uh, cybersecurity skill gap. The reality there is that most people, uh, they have reached out to me that uh, uh, they want to switch to cybersecurity. Uh, what you, that they've done this, they've done both. By the time you look at, uh, you test them, you test their skill, you, under, you find out that uh, most of them, they just have uh, certificates, but they don't have any in-depth skill. You can see the. Uh, Sorry, sir. Please, can you switch to um, slight motor? Okay, is it very. <laughs> okay. Let me see. Okay, is it clear now? Yes, it's clear, sir. You can as well enable your video, sir. It's on slide mode, so I can't see my video. Okay. But can you, can you see me? Can you see me? Not yet, sir. Oh, uh, then that means if I, if I put my, if I put it on slide, you can uh, you guys cannot see the video. Okay, okay. But okay. you can hear me, it's, let's, let's go on. You can hear me. So let's see. Is, is that a question? It's okay, sir. You can, you can go ahead, sir. Okay, so we look at the skill uh, skills gap uh, conducted by uh, ISACA. You can see those that want cyber security career, how much they are from the people that we are uh, surveying. But uh, assess, after assessment, you can see that uh, you can see the gap, those that uh, adequately prepared and those that are not yet uh, prepared at all. So this is a, an opportunity for every one of us right now. I know some uh, some people called uh, me recently that they are serving and they want to uh, know how how to delve into cybersecurity, what should they do and all that. This is an opportunity you, when you start working, uh, it is going to be very serious. Uh, especially if 
if you are in a cybersecurity domain, is actually sometimes uh, the job doesn't have a, a starting time and a closing time. You could be at home 11 p.m. There's an incident, and you have to be you have to wake up and sort it out. So most times uh, it's not easy when you see uh, people reading, writing exam even while working. So now that you have that opportunity, uh, you are staying in school. This, uh, there's a break now, or you are serving, or you just finished. You yet to get a job. This is the opportunity. There are so many free resources online that you can use now to build your career towards this uh, towards this line. You could see the growing cybersecurity skill gap, the number of workers that will be needed in the year 2022. This uh, survey was done by Boston government. Uh, there will be a shortage of 1.8 million information security workers. This, is an this shows you that there's an opportunity, there's a big opportunity in this uh, uh, industry. I do tell people that I still go to school to study accounting and some, there are some courses that I don't go to school to study again because a time will come, they don't need any of those people to do the job anymore. There are softwares that, there are SMEs that use an accounting software to do their account they don't need an accountant to do that so many other uh, 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 professions are going out are being phased out as we speak but you can see because the world is going uh, global it's becoming a uh, global village and everything is becoming digital digitalized uh, we'll see the trend landscape and see how uh, it has exploded over time but you can see here that there will always be demand for cybersecurity uh, uh, professionals. So it's, uh, this is the right time to key into, into uh, building your skills so that immediately you come out, uh, you, you get a good job immediately. So let's see uh, what's the difference between, I know some of you might be hearing this for the first time, red team, purple team, blue team. The red team are those uh, that are always on. If you know, uh, you should not chase uh, your career in cybersecurity because uh, someone is uh, doing so and so. Maybe some you have a friend uh, is a hacker, blah blah blah. You can hack anything, but you too, you now want to be, you now struggling to. Yeah, it, it happened to me. So I, I, I try to tell you, when, when you find out where your passion is, it's better you just stick to it. You understand? You, some people these days, because they can run MMAP scan, they feel they are penetration testers. You, you get. So, but uh, there is more to it. We find where if you know you can break, you like to. Yes, uh, your skill should be nurtured for uh, to be a red teamer. Red teamers are those that look for uh, vulnerability, that look for bugs, that look for control gaps in a in an application, in an environment, in an organization. They try to break in and find the uh, find the holes before threat actors uh, find that hole. Uh, you can call them ethical hackers, but that's this is particularly what they do. Uh, they try to look for uh, gaps in uh, security uh, solutions and uh, organizations.
Okay, sorry. Uh, I think we have. Uh, Let's kind of okay, he'll be back soon, please. All right, he has left the room. Um, hope we are enjoying in the session before he goes. Um, he's trying to explain the the differences between the different um. that we have. So I'm trying to contact him. No, 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 we are not hacked. So, you know, normally we uh, we have our diaries in the morning because the traffic on the internet by then is not too populated. But because of his work schedule, so we have to, um, you know, bring it to 6 p.m. Okay. All right, he's already coming in. Let's just have some some seconds patience. All right, so Dario Vargas is a uh, it's a platform where students collaborate and share common goals, which is to learn. We have had four diaries, as I've stated earlier, and we have we hope to have many more diaries. So this is just one of the few diaries we've had, and we basically bring in industry experts. Oh, okay, yeah, he has joined. Hello. Yeah, you're welcome, sir. Am I, how did I go off? I didn't know that I, I was off. Where did I stop, please? Where did I stop? Can you hear me? We can hear you very well, sir. Yeah, I know. Where did I stop? I didn't know I was off. Stop at the um the purple team stuff telling us why we need oh, to go. Wow, 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 wow. And I've been going. <laughs> okay. Uh I said here that the purple team use uh, the knowledge of both uh, uh domains, the red team, uh the offense and defense. They use the uh, knowledge for the common goal of uh, uh, uh securing uh an organization and improving its security posture. You can you can kindly share your screen, sir. Wow. Um, my screen is being shared. Oh my god. Wow. Yeah, I like can see you very well, sir. Now. Okay, sorry. Uh, this is not the system I wanted to use, and it's kind of giving me issues there. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so I, I was, I had already <laughs> gone back through here. I didn't know I was. Okay, a blue team has role. Uh, like I said, is primarily to defend the organization and carry out in-depth investigation whenever a security incident occurs. So. Uh, uh, the job of a blue teamer is always to defend uh, with the knowledge of how, uh, with the knowledge of 
the threat of uh, threat actors attack pattern. So uh, the, the job of the uh, blue team are here is to to be one step ahead of uh, the threat actor because threat actors uh, let me use uh, let me call them hackers or the red teamers because when you call it red team it means uh, what the simulation they are doing is not uh, uh, is not uh, exploitative they are actually doing it to uh, improve the security posture of the organization so your job is to make it very difficult for an attacker to penetrate into your environment uh, and also you uh, measure you measure you identify security flaws in your environment and make sure that the controls that you've placed are actually working getting a uh, who a 360 view of your environment. So uh, this, is, this is something that every organization, no matter how small they are, uh, need at this very time, because uh, it's not actually if you are going to be hacked, it's, uh, it's a way, because there's no security, even uh, White House, Pentagon, CIA, they've all been hacked. So no matter how secure you make your, if I, if an attacker wants to come in, they, even if it takes them five years, they can come in. So your job is to make it difficult for them that they go elsewhere because they like to look for low hanging fruit. So uh, I, instead of when I know that if I come to uh, MTN, uh, it will take me five months to break in. And if I, why not? Uh, why why should you, uh, why not go to maybe Stockholm? If Stockholm will take me uh, twenty four hours to break here, why should I spend five months on the MTN? You understand? But there's also the uh, the part of motivation. What is motivating them? If they know that the reward is going to be higher, uh, sometimes they go to take that pain. So it's our job. It's our job to build skills relevant for us to frustrate them. To disrupt them and to slow them down, um, make them find another uh, victim. So, uh, so uh, to be a blue, to, blue team, I need to know the enemy, and you also need to know yourself. By knowing yourself, you have to know uh, the crown jewels that you are protecting. Those things that uh, are very precious for your organization. Those those things that are precious in your environment that you know. Now, uh, once they get it, uh, uh, it might affect the continuity of that business. You have to know where every asset is in your environment. You have to know the techniques, the tactics, and the procedures that your enemy is going to use to attack you. Uh, particularly in, in a uh, in a work environment, you know that if uh, an attack doesn't come in by email, might come in. Uh, uh, from uh, the browser, my coming by someone uh, compromising his uh, credential or someone falling. There are so many. There are so many ways an attacker can come in. So your job as a blue team is to make sure that all these attack surfaces are well protected and defense controls are uh, designed for every of them. You can see as a blue team. Okay, this is a, uh, I think this is a survey carried out by uh, IBM. I don't, can't remember which year, but you can see the amount of security events that we, you can see the amount of security events that happened in probably, let's use a ABC, ABC Bank. These are the amount of is, uh, uh, events that happen annually, monthly, weekly. And out of this uh, event, the probability that these are the amount of attacks that are happening. And your job is to make sure this attack does not become an incident. You understand? Attackers can scan your network, your public IPs, they can try this SQL injection, they can try several bots. Your aim is to make sure, sorry. Your aim is to make sure that they don't get to this part. There are no incidents 
occurs. Or even if an incident occurs, you are able to contain it and uh, protect your organization. So these are blue team roles. Uh, sorry, uh, the number three there, I think. You know, I've updated this slide, but uh, I, I couldn't use the other system. So I didn't get the third part. Uh, so uh, these are blue team roles that are available for people who want to do their skill along this line. You have the incident response analyst. These are the people that uh, investigate incident that when there's a downtime, when there's any issue, they are the one that find out how did that issue, how did it come about, and what should we do to make sure that such incident does not happen again. The malware analysts, these are those that look at uh, uh, malware, try to find out, uh, pick out uh, indicators of compromise. Uh, from this malware so that they use it to enrich their uh, threat intelligence uh, function to make sure that all this, uh, that particular attack does not find its way into the environment again. Uh, I can, an example here is uh, uh, via email. You know, these days the attackers send, uh, 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 they know that it's very, it's easier for them to go through someone that, uh, falls victim to phishing mail. So they try to send uh, embedded uh, malware uh, to their email and hope, hoping that someone in the organization will uh, click and uh, give them a new way into the organization. But uh, these days, as a blue teamer, you make sure that you have controls that uh, in, uh, I, at your email gateway to make sure that this, uh, even when any email that is trying to come into your organization is uh, is filtered, and if it if it finds any uh, malicious uh, behavior or abnormal behavior on that email, it drops it. So uh, if you work in, in a big organization, especially banks, uh, most of all these issues uh, they make investment to make sure that uh, they don't experience such. Then the threat intelligence analysts; these are those that. Uh, look at things that have happened in other organizations, things that have happened around the world. They look out for indicators of compromise and they try to uh, update search in their environment so that um, all their security solution. Uh, let me give a typical example. Uh, so an email came in embedded with malware and uh, no, something happened in uh, XYZ Bank and uh, uh, they declare that they've been breached. Uh, sometimes they release that this was the, the uh, this was the mode of the attack and all that. So what a threat intelligence analyst should do is to look at that incident, extract all the indicators of compromise. What were the things that led to that incident? What were the uh, um, what was the mode of attack? and make sure that such does not happen in his own organization. The SOC analyst, which is full for security operation center analyst, these are those that monitor several, uh, monitor the net, uh, the organization, the environment, the network environment, that have full visibility of everything going on in the environment, looking for uh, uh, threats and uh, uh, the, any sign of abnormality in the organization, they are the first to see it. Because when you see those people in, uh, if you watch, uh, if you watch uh, 24, you see those guys, uh, those uh, guys working with Jack Bauer, looking at several screen screens. And so most of them are uh, security operation center analysts. That's how a stock is designed. So for digital forensic analysts, these are uh, the people that uh, try to, when an incident happens, they, they, you call on these people also. They are the ones that try to uh, trace how that incident happened. What can we extract? What can we do? Can we take a, a memory ca a dump, packet capture? Can we do uh, imaging of the hard drive and all that? They do a lot. The reverse engineers try to uh, work on the malicious code 
try to treat uh, the binaries of the uh, malware. They, they, they try to re-engineer and see if uh, what that particular malware was intended to do in the environment. Uh, same thing with uh, malicious code analysis. So these are uh, several, I think, I don't, I'm not sure this is exhaustive, but uh, these are rules that uh, you can look up to if you want to be a blue team uh, analyst, a blue team operation person. So, so recently we've seen that uh, threats are, are more evasive, strategic, and uh, attacks are more dangerous. So organizations, even uh, recently, I think I saw one of these spot bed shop looking for a cybersecurity person to come help them uh, defend their enterprise. Uh, there was a time, I think, short bet. Uh, uh, there was a breach that all show where all the customers, their details you are released online. They started looking for a security pers personnel to protect them. So you can see that even those places that you think that uh, uh, nobody's looking at, these days they are looking for someone to help defend their enterprise, to defend their business, because they know that it's just take a, it's a matter of uh, why and they lose everything that they want to do. You can see that cyber criminals are exploring new ways and new avenues for attack. Uh, from the first, uh, from the first one on Skype, you can see that uh, they've tried to get they've tried to get infiltrate this uh, company, but they couldn't. They just sent uh, got in, in touch with one of them through Skype. And uh, he was gullible enough to download the uh, uh, what they say. One of them was uh, called for an interview, and they sent him a file. And they say, uh, download this file and fill the form and send back to us. Thinking he was uh, contacted by a reputable company. Meanwhile, th these are attackers. So you can see how ingenious these uh, threat actors are getting. <laughs> are getting these days. They know that if they try to pass through the perimeter, that they are going to find it very difficult. So they look for someone, try to social engineer the person. This person was thinking he was uh, coming for an interview. He was filling a form for an interview. Meanwhile, he has already uh, uh, given them a leeway into uh, his organization. Then watering who attack. Uh, let me explain this. Uh, you know, just like uh, if you're if you're working in ABC Bank and there's a, uh, maybe a restaurant close by, but uh, most of you order from that restaurant and I'm targeting your company and I can't get in. So I go to the website of that, uh, um, of the restaurant. I plant, I, can, I saw that it was vulnerable. I planted a bug in that uh, website hoping and waiting for you guys to log on and order food. Imeti, I've already programmed that whenever uh, such and such person visit this website, uh, initiate the attack, you understand? So this, uh, what, uh, this is a uh, kind of a watering who attack. Attackers use this uh, uh, method to get uh, to infiltrate uh, organizations now. So you can see that, from here we see that the threat landscape has continued to expand. Now we see devices, cars, uh, fridge, meter, so many things connected to the internet. And most of these items, they were not built with security in mind. So you can see the attack surface is very wide now and is a, is a free for all uh, for threat actors. They can pick anyone and uh, attack. You can see uh, big data, cloud, open APIs. Now people want uh, to be banking with Stambik and use their Stambik, Stambik bank to be, uh, check their account in Wema. You understand? They want the banking architecture. Sorry, am I still on? Hello. 
Yes, sir. You are very long, sir. Okay, yeah. So uh, they want to be, be able to use one app and deal with uh, five banks. Maybe even their... They want to interconnect so many things they do online together. And this comes with a lot of risk. And the, this risk, because of this risk, all these organizations need a blue teamer to come and defend them. You understand? So many people, it's uh, easy for someone to just go and say, I want to be a penetration tester. I want to you just go uh, type, uh, you just be, uh, once you go and learn MMAP or do CH, and you say, uh, you say uh, an ethical account, but when it, they tell you now to defend the organization, it becomes very difficult for you. It's, I'm not saying it, it's, uh, it's not uh, a good decision going, uh, the way of uh, uh, red team, but it, you also need that knowledge to defend well. You need the offensive knowledge to defend well. Uh, you can see I got a couple of uh, uh, hacking uh, uh, certification because I want to know how this attackers think so that I'll be able to defend my organization very well. So, um, let me see. Oh, okay. I actually skip, wanted to skip this side. So I don't, as it's out of scope. Okay, this shows uh, the uh, the flow, how an attacker uh, penetrates and infiltrates uh, uh, an organization. They start with reconnaissance, they identify the target, exploit, uh, and look for exploitable weakness. They create their uh, weapon, their attack vector, how, and they find a way of delivering it. Is it by email, or should we, or should we use watering hole attack? Should we uh, drop USB? You know, there are sometimes you go for event, they give you USB, you you collect, you take home, or take to your organization, you plug in. You don't know you have been given a malware. As you plug it in, you have given them a bad back door to your either your organization or your personal laptop. So most times, uh, this is just uh, the attack flow. I think I removed it in the updated slide because I didn't want to go out scope uh, uh, based on the brief I was given. So this is just the, the anatomy of uh, a, cyber, a cyber attack. There are several models. I think uh, the most popular models are the cyber kill chain and uh, the diamond model of attack. So you can look at this. Uh, uh, later on, cyber keychain and diamond model. Oh, I've updated this slide before. Okay, this just this just explains what uh, uh, was in the previous slide. Uh, taking a lot of time. Let me just. Uh, so, as a blue team, uh, uh, it's a very I would tell you is a very interesting uh, place to be uh, because you you get to work with a lot of these tools. So you can see that at every stage of a threat actor's attack, you have to design controls and implement controls to make sure you frustrate them at each stage. If he passes through all this one, all these ones, they are waiting for him. If he passes through all this one, all these ones, they are waiting for him. If he, if he tries and pass this stage, all these ones, they are waiting for him. You understand? So uh, you try to create a defense in that uh, um, uh, layer of uh, security that whatever, even if they uh, get my credentials, I have two FA. I, I'm sure most of us have a multi-factor authentication on our uh, emails, uh, even WhatsApp and all those things. So that even if you compromise, they cannot their, their influence is very limited, you understand? So most of all these are to frustrate and disrupt them, you understand? Because they will always come, they will always attack. So as a blue team, you, are, you have an opportunity to work with almost all these solutions. This is a new generation firewall, data loss prevention, uh, SIM is a security incident and event uh, management solution. Uh, that's the curators and the arc site and the log victim and all that. 
firewall, endpoint security, EDR, this endpoint uh, detection and response. SWA is a security orchestration and automation response solution. Uh, file integrity, money, what, whenever an attacker comes in and installs any uh, attack tool on your, on your machine or in your, or in your organization, this particular solution will pick it up. You understand? You tell you, hey, something has been installed on this particular machine or this file has changed. You understand? So there's also application control. You can whitelist all the file that you want to be installed on a particular machine. You just tell you that anything that is not in this uh, whitelist, block it. You understand? There are so many other solutions and these are just to uh, break and you have the opportunity as a blue teamer to work with several of these uh, uh, to implement to deploy and work with uh, them the red teamer guys will just be trying to break in break in break in but most of them do uh, they have to study how many solutions that they have to break through before they get their action on ob objective again so so what are the two key requirements for building the required skills? First, I, I, I mentioned two because uh, I, there are so many, but these are the two key uh, requirements. Get hands-on experience. It doesn't, this, this time that there's uh, COVID, uh, schools are on break, or probably you are serving, you can look for somewhere, you, even if it's for free, get hands-on experience. Build a personal lab that you can uh, uh, work with. Something you can uh, practice on your own because you're not going to get it anytime soon. And in this field, uh, if you check most of your friends, probably that have graduated before you, you ask them. In this field, most people don't want to recruit you and train you. They want to recruit someone that already knows what he's doing. Then every other thing will be an add-on. So you have to get hands-on experience. There are so many resources online. I'll share them here. So many resources. Some are free, some are paid. You have to be hungry for knowledge. And you have to go all out. Because it's, it's beyond knowing how to even deploy and configure. It requires doing practical hands-on experience. Malware analysis, reverse engineering, forensics. You need hands-on experience. It's not something you read uh, in the book. You need to do it uh, to know that uh, to uh, boost that you know it. Then training and certifications. When you go for most of these certifications, the training materials you you study, they also give you a lot of knowledge. I used to tell people, see, you, you when you are looking for dumps, you want to write a design. You are looking for dumps. You are cheating yourself. The time we come because you want to, you are looking for a shortcut. True, it's very good. At least certification will give you, we open that door for you. Most of the openings, they will tell you that if you don't have a CH, if you don't have this, if you don't have this. So immediately you apply. Once they see you don't even have any of them, they drop your CV. So certification will even help you get to the door. Then when you now get to the interview, your skill will now see you through. Or even when you get the job, your skill is what we see you through. So it's always, it's always advised you get the skill, build your skill, and cement it with a certification. Since most of you are still in school and uh, recent graduates and also serving, you can use this time, build the uh, start reading. You can start with a security plus. CH, those are things you can, is, the material is so loaded that if you finish, you know that you, at least you've gotten a bearing on cyber security. You now choose where do you want to go? Should you be a defender or should you be an uh, uh, a, a vulnerability assess, assess, assessor? You understand? So there are so many uh, ways this can go, but these two are the most they are the very key uh, uh, requirements for you to uh, 
move ahead in this field. So uh, uh, basic tools. These are basic tools of the trade. Uh, Six internal tools. These are uh, these are free tools. They are open source. It's just uh, Wireshark for network capturing, network miner. Most of these things they are very easy to use. Just look for documentation online. Very easy to use. Debuggers. Uh, this is a little bit advanced, but they are also very necessary. You should know at least how to use some of these tools. Process monitor, protect when you can. Okay. Uh, if you have a lab, if you can create a lab, a personal uh, lab for yourself, you can install all these and use it to practice. Look, go online. There are some, don't download your personal machine, you download in the VM. You can drop any file or malware in the VM. Uh, open the open the file or or load the malware. Then open any of this any of these uh, applications in Sys internal and start to monitor what is that file doing. I want to see the process being initiated. I want to see the files that it drops. I want to see uh, the uh, domains that it tries to call. Where is it trying to transfer my uh, traffic to? You understand? All these are very, very uh, important. There are a lot of them in the Sys internals. You just go to Microsoft website, type Sys internals, and you, you can download it. Wireshark is free. Network Miner is free. Browser link is a. So if you have a, a link you want to test, uh, let me open it so that. Let me test that. Sorry, can you still see my screen? Um, yes, sir. We can still see your screen, sir. Okay. Uh, sorry, I'm taking a lot of time. So, browsing. So, uh, so you have a you have a malicious uh, URL, but you don't want to open it in your on your machine so that it don't infect your machine. You can come here. This is a virtual browser. You can select the operating system you want it to run on. You understand? I want the Windows 7 and give me Chrome or Mozilla. I want Chrome. Okay, let me put the URL. Who knows any malicious URL? I added this thing on my personal system. I, anyway, let's just use uh, uh, what should we do? And anyway, let's use Google. It is Google. It's now. You understand? Whatever you do here does not affect your system. So even if that URL is malicious, it does not affect your system. So most times when I get a, a malicious email that passes through, that finds their way through and uh, has embedded URL or link, I, I copy the URL and I come here to uh, check whether it drops any when I put it, you just see it drops a file. That's the uh, a dropper, and it's uh, uh, find its way to give uh, the attacker a backdoor into your system or or your machine or your organization environment. Let's go back. Okay, virus to tie. This is also an online sandbox, and whatever you do there. You can take any hash. Oh, God. Oh, I have a lot of things on that system. I wanted to simulate some of these things. Okay. Most of all these, and they are very free. Go to Mandiant uh, website. Mandiant has a lot. A lot of free tools. Mandiant is owned by FireEye. FireEye is a security solution. They build uh, some of those uh, stuff I showed you guys. 
uh, the film. I'm looking for the two resources. So you can go to FireEye website. You see free tools. Most of those tools, I think I have them in my drive. I just want to show you. Mangiant, mangiant, mangiant. Okay. Okay, a lot of a lot of uh, tools that you can use. You can use this to extract IOCs from uh, there are so so many. I think they have a flare VM. Okay, let's continue. I'll come back to this. So there are some virtual machines that you can help you too for malware analysis, for investigations. Uh, this is a Sleep the forensic uh, workstation, Rainmos for reverse engineer. Go online, download all these uh, 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 VMs. Create a, a virtual a machine on your on your system. You don't analyze uh, malware on your personal system. You create a they call it a hyper hypervisor. So there are two popular ones: uh, VMware and virtual. You create it, it sits on your system, but whatever you do inside does not. I think I have to download one because I, I had, uh, I didn't have it on this system. It was on my other system. So whatever you, I can, I can, I can run Windows Seven, Windows Ten, Windows Eight on this machine, but it does not. It won't affect my host. You understand? So that's where I go and install most of those tools. Let me look, let me do one. So, uh, should I do this now? See, I think we're almost done, let's done. So, we finished. I think this is very tiny, right? Can you see this? Yeah, we can see it. I can see it from my own end. Oh, uh, I don't know if others can see it. So, uh, like I find out, it does a number of all this. Uh, the SOC, uh, security monitoring, uh, SWA, they have a SWA. They do some of all this. Okay, yeah. These are resources to aid your blue team learning experience. So, uh, we can look at some of them. Let's look at. Uh, let's look at. Uh, this I'll just look at a couple that after this session you can just go at so many resources online so you can see I think I have a profile here so I'll just use it to show you so you can see this is a blue team certification what, do, what will it teach you Security fundamental, how to analyze phishing mails, threat intelligence, digital forensics. See, let me go to the training. What does it, it teaches you defense, defensive skills? And most of all these things, they are not expensive. Another thing I want to say, when you pay for, when you pay for a certification or you pay for a training, you, you, you do it, you, you are very serious doing it. But when you get it for free, most times you, you notice that you don't even do it at the end. Or you just leave a shit, you free, shit, you But when you pay for it, uh, when, you, when, we pay, when you pay with your blood, you know that you have to go through it. You see, threat hunting, vulnerability management, digital for network analysis, how much? See? But you gain skills. These are very. Let me do similar. So I'm just showing you my profile. I wanted to show I want to show you some because I already have this. 
so you can see how the training is like details you even have a assignment you that you do practical and all that they give you a brief this challenge a challenge I use so if I build those skills, those skills that people think that uh, it's only people that travel abroad that has it. You can see the curriculum. So most times, there, there are a lot of them. I'm just uh, showing this so that because if I, if I just came through it, no good. some of you will not look at it again. Uh, let's see each other one. Okay, let's see this one. These are resources that can help you. Build defensive skills. There are lots of free ones there. I'm just showing you the some of the paid ones. So you see how so you see the learning parts here: network forensic, computer forensic, digital forensic, how to work with hard drives, file systems, email and browser forensics, memory forensic. You know, like I told you, there are some fileless attack. Those ones don't even drop any file on your system. They run in the memory. They invoke a PowerShell on your system and, and do their business and get off. You understand? Mobile forensic. A lot of, uh, a lot of resources online that you can use. And uh, where's my stuff? OK. So I don't know. These are more resources that you can use. Uh, so, uh, see, I did not. I'm supposed to have updated this place. <laughs> okay, so the key takeaway here is what? Uh, one, identify your passion and your interest. Set goals and target each achievement that you want to get you already know look at uh, where you want to be you want to learn you want to be a malware analyst you want to be an incident responder start looking at uh, oh i i missed there was a slide that's not here i think uh, the certifications that you should go for you understand network with people with the same goal go to linkedin you see guys that have that are doing well in that, that you should be looking up to. You follow them, follow whatever they are doing, whatever they are posting, what try and make friends with them so that you see how, how when they are moving forward, you you try to catch up. Those are the people that we that will help you to meet your goal. On Twitter, there, I think there are some, some of those uh, resources I shared. You see some uh, research analysts. These guys working, uh, they are working in very top uh, security uh, firms. You follow them because they are always releasing so many, so many uh, knowledgeable stuff that you can learn from. Develop your passion and hunger for knowledge. Attend relevant webinars online. You can go to Bright Talk. They always, they always doing something. Let me open. Uh, bright talk. Okay, this is bright talk. See, they are always uh, having webinars, security webinars. Just plug in to register, and whenever they have anyone relevant to you, you get a uh, you register, you watch it. You can even watch it later, and they have uh, certificates for each of the, most of them. They have uh, some that has uh, attachments, some resources for you to download and read later. So, is the when you have the passion, you're going to go find this field. Uh, pay for knowledge. I've said it before. Try and pay for knowledge. Uh, if you're always looking for free, 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 the one that is free, 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 except if you know that you're going to go to uh, go go through. But when you pay for it. Uh, let me show you. There's one I paid for recently. Yeah, sometimes, 
So even because every day we have to learn. If you think uh, I've not gotten there, I still learn. So you can see the cost I paid for the how much and because I know when I I'm, I'll go through it. So it's, it's loony, but you, you, when I pay that kind of money and it leaves my body like blood, I have to, I have to go through it. Hello everyone, my name is Amitabh. You understand? So most times uh, we look for, so uh, we look for free stores and uh, because it's free, we don't uh, go all the way. And it's, it's, uh, it's not something, uh, for this uh, uh, field, you have to always try to be ahead of the attacker, else you're going to lose your job. That's the funny thing. Every day I wake up, I don't do the same thing in the office because I wake up, I know that I'll meet a new challenge in the office. If it doesn't come this way, come this way, I have to do what? I have to research. I have to read blogs. I have to read the uh, threats intelligence reports. I have to look at uh, uh, manual, manual analysis reports. I have to look at what is happening uh, around uh, the industry I'm working. I don't want my boss to be the first person to hear that they have a so-so-so bank. You understand? I'm the one that should be telling him that, ah, sir, do you know that the so-so-so bank, you understand that this is how they did it, this is how they did it. I should be the one to be telling him that because the day it will happen, everybody will just tell you to go on. If we are paying you to protect the bank and this is able to happen, there's no need having you around. Uh, so, uh, I don't know. Ah, wow, we took a lot of time. Yeah, I have an exam by eight o'clock. <laughs> okay, uh, maybe I'll just take a few questions and uh, we. I hope I'm, I was able to uh, guide uh, a number of you on how to build a career uh, in this part. Thank you. All right. Thank you very, very much, sir. In fact, the presentation was even beyond our expectations. Trust me, sir, you did uh, wonderfully well. Thank you very much, sir. On behalf of all attendees of uh, um, the Diary of Akas and myself, I express my utmost gratitude towards the facilitator for today. Um, thank you very much, sir, um, for honoring the uh, organizer's call and shedding more light on Blue Team. It uh, has been a wonderful session, sir. Uh, so the question we have here quickly is just um, just one question. Any other question will be addressed to you. I will, make, I will get in touch to you with that. Um, the question is, is that why is why is it that nigerian companies neglect cyber security concern why is it that um nigerian companies neglect cyber security concern so you can unmute your mic sir mm -hmm. okay uh i don't know where uh, such notion was gotten from Especially at this time, uh, I don't think uh, uh, companies uh, 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 are neglecting. I have friends that uh, uh, told me that ah, it's like this COVID uh, uh, COVID uh, situation has uh, opened the eyes of their their management, and now they are just signing, signing, signing anyhow for uh, security uh, investment uh, because now uh, people have to work from home and you have to give them access as if they are in the office and you're giving them that access you're exposing your organization you're exposing uh your organization to attackers you're you're exposing your sensitive information because now people stay at home and do work that they do in the office their family members are around and maybe visitors are around 
they have access to see uh, companies uh, sensitive uh, materials uh, it is not uh, uh, most companies have invested a lot uh, this period uh, more than they've done in the last five years so uh, it's not uh, something that is not uh, they don't they uh, most uh, companies they've really taking it serious at this time so i don't know where uh, the person got that question that uh, notion from that uh, nigerian companies don't get even i told you babi jebu is looking for security analyst to do what is it to to play number <laughs> uh, sorry that was a, a joke there okay any other question all right um this question is from me sir so um for some that are just venturing into cyber security and probably they can have uh any internship opportunity currently or maybe a job Hello, sir. You can unmute, sir. I say, can you repeat? I, I didn't hear you. The line was breaking. Hello. Um, people that have, um, <clears throat> sorry, uh, uh, some skill sets and are maybe ready for job. Can you recommend one or two places they can get a job as an ent for an entry level, probably, or internship opportunity you are currently aware of? Yeah, uh, let me write. These are people that are ready to give you opportunities. Um. You can chat me up later, I will send you others, but these are those I know uh, uh, giving the uh, young school leavers the uh, opportunities and those uh, are available at this time because of uh, the lockdown. They can give you, I think the same person owns these two companies. But this, uh, you go through a period of training and they, they absorb you. So you can look at them. Uh, these are pure cyber security companies. Uh, All right, sir. Thank you very much. Please, uh, we need to uh, allow the speaker to go. He has exam by 8 o'clock, so he needs to get prepared. Um, special appreciation once again to our um, guest speaker. We thank you very much, and we hope to see you again some other time. I want to say to my fellow enthusiasts, let's keep learning and make use, make the best use of opportunity like this to network and also to to get our hands-on experience. By the special grace of God, we have come to the end of this session. We want to thank the speaker once again for today and uh, well-impacted knowledge. We pray that God will continue to use you and um, grant you more uh, knowledge and wisdom. Thank you very much, sir. So for everybody, we are Diary of Hackers. I will just drop our um, our WhatsApp group so that you can join us for more information and also some other discussion we, we have. You can click on the link. Um, and also all the, all the relevant information will be posted to your email, please. So you can join our whatsapp group so that you can have more information so thank you very much everybody thank you sir you can unmute sir your last word sir uh, no uh like i said uh, is uh, uh just develop a passion and build skill and uh, the sky is your limit uh uh, if you write an exam, you feel write it again. Don't be tempted to use them because you 
you cram and when uh, it's time to show uh, the skill you claim you you have uh, it is very it uh, demoralizes you even yeah try and go for interviews even though you know that you might not work there go for interviews let them let them bash you at least you when you go back you go and read or you go and get knowledge on uh, that particular thing you feel to answer so most times i go i want to know what's new what uh, am i still relevant in this field uh, is there something new i can i can i can learn and uh, uh, what's 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 my value in the industry so build your skill and the sky is your limits thank you all